Almost heaven, West Virginia. <laughs> University of Virginia owns the Blandy Experimental Farm ah. uh, for many decades. Yep. They've, they've got uh, <clears throat> motivated mm -hmm. to really search their records. Oh. And, and they took um, a metal detector out into the woods where the two rows, mostly they're all dead now, but they scoured the floor with the metal detector. They found the original tags oh. for the two trees that I called BEF 53 and 54. Oh. Okay, and they wow. linked those back to the records that Orland White, the director, kept. Mm -hmm. So the BEF 53 and 54, mother trees to Susquehanna and Potomac. Right. Okay. Those trees came from seed of Fairchild number two. Fairchild number two. Number two is a daughter of Fairchild, Fairchild, just period, Fairchild. Right. And that's the daughter that's the of, progeny of... of Ketter, the prize winning fruit of 1916. Wow. So the genes, from, I mean, it looked so ashamed to have the contest and all that stuff be lost. Yeah. But now yeah. we've discovered that Miss, Miss Ketter's fruit uh, has been, her genetics is preserved in yeah. that lineage, in that, in lineage. that pedigree. Yeah. These are two of Neil Peterson's cultivars, Shenandoah and Susquehanna, planted outside the Harper's Ferry Post Office in 2009. You can see he keeps them pruned relatively short, topping off about 10 feet. Um, this goes to show how you can manage their size fairly easily uh, with proper pruning. He said that he had some fruits bagged in here. Um, but these, these trees, I first met them back in 2015. They were a bit smaller. Uh, and the fruits were littering the ground, but Neil says that that does not happen these days because pawpaws are so popular, people recognize them and take the fruit um, often from the tree too immature to eat. So he's had to put a sign out that explains to only take the ones on the ground. Uh, Epic poison ivy. Rodney likes this tree, but... Oh, that's going to be ripe. May need another day inside, right? Yes. Potomac. Potomac, And yeah. the, the leaf has a uh, recognizable quality to it. It's got this wavy thing going on the edge. Potomac has a wavy leaf. I didn't notice that until just now. Is this Potomac again? This one. No, it's not sufficiently wavy. No. I, I know that this one is Wabash. Wabash? Yeah, that's, that's right. It's got a wide leaf. It, Wabash. No, that's because it's springing up this year. I would say next year it won't show that much. I've never seen Wabash before with that size leaf. Yeah, it's a little slower than a lot of mine. Wabash is not as vigorous as some, mm -hmm. but okay. on my rootstocks at least. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the rootstock influence is. Yeah, we don't know. This is... Here in the Pawpaw understory in West Virginia. This is Bolivar Park, where I first picked my first wild pawpaws uh, in West Virginia uh, eight years ago. You can see how in nature these are understory trees. Uh, this is their normal growth habit. Kind of casually just looking for fruit. The orchard? Yep. Yeah. Uh oh. Just saying hello. <laughs>